All right. So, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Littleton Planning Commission, Monday, October 25th. This is a special meeting, a study session. And um, if we could have a roll call, please. Mr. Bockenstedt. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Coronado. Uh, Commissioner Coronado called and, and apologized. He had a, a work uh, conflict tonight. Commissioner Iteraria. Commissioner Newfinky. Here. Commissioner Metcalf. Here. Commissioner Ranville. Here. Commissioner Samuelson. Here. And Commissioner Stravopoulos. Again, he, he apologized. He had a work conflict as well. So we're missing two. Very good. We do have a quorum present. Um, everyone, I believe, has a copy of the agenda draft in front of them. Um, is there any changes or revisions, additions? I'd sure. like to propose under the agenda section six, wrap up in upcoming meetings, to discuss an, um, an overview of the process for the comp plan. So we can kind of get an idea of uh, where are we going, what, you know, what are the tasks that we need to do to be able to finish up the comp plan. Okay, Good. so brief discussion then. Does that Absolutely. seem agreeable? And also, I apologize, we've got two corrections on the dates for November. It's November 8th and November 22nd, so. Right. Under upcoming meetings, the next regular meeting would be, uh, or the next scheduled meeting, I should say, would be Monday, November 8th. And uh, following that, our second meeting in November would be on the 22nd. Uh, so, all right. Um, anything else that we want to discuss regarding the uh, agenda? If not, I don't see anybody. Um, we have uh, as a second item review of the draft framework for our uh, comprehensive plan in the downtown area. And Dennis has some brochures. We're going to project one for the public to see here shortly. And welcome, Julio. A little blustery out there, isn't it? Uh, it shut quieted down. Oh, did it? Oh, yeah. very good. Well, it'll be summer again by the time we're out. Um, all right. There we go. Uh, Sarah Jane and I have been working on, on the framework that we've been looking at for a while. Uh, in terms of the evolution, it, as you've seen, we started off with uh, boundaries and street spine and, and then built a framework for downtown and what we've got in front of you is uh, what we're looking at is, is kind of a standalone document which would be part of the downtown area plan but also could be a, a kind of a visual summary for what the vision is for downtown what the plan is what the current conditions are and uh, could actually be handed out distributed independently of, of the plan itself so looking at this as both an insert into the plan as, as well as a freestanding um, We've made a few changes in response to the comments that we've been getting uh, and uh, keep, keeps evolving a little bit. We're pretty comfortable with it now. We've added the text, kind of explains what each of these things is and how we got there and what it really means in terms of implication. So we have some text that goes along with it. We've talked about possibly some additional changes to the, to the format for this, um, and we'll still work on that in terms of how does it read best um, right now, we've got, as you can see, three uh, issues on the front, three of the, the diagrams, and then as you get to the middle, there are um, six more of the, of the diagrams. Thanks, Doug. And um, we're thinking about possibly putting all the diagrams in the, in the, in the interior of this so you could see all of them, see that evolution. Uh, we'd probably cut that down to eight in order to do that and combine two of the, the diagrams. So we end up with eight diagrams and still have the, the final uh, completed diagram on the back, which is this one. So, excuse me. So, um, that would still be on the back of, of the brochure. But that's kind of what we're heading. What we'd really appreciate uh, at this point is if um, you look at these and as you read through them, if you kind of give us comments, email comments to me and it's the things you see uh, that you think we've gotten wrong or just don't make sense, um, any, any comments you've got, we'd appreciate so we could kind of finalize uh, this portion at least of, of, the, of the framework for the downtown plan. Uh, Serge, anything you want to add to that? Okay. Okay. Um, any comments just kind of off the top of your heads before you get a chance to get into this? 
Are we on the right track? Uh, it looks like. So do you like the idea of having kind of a, a handout, uh, kind of freestanding handout that, uh, that we could we can use as a summary for the plan? Does that seem to make sense? In our minds, the visual part, I think, is if we can get that really clear in terms of what the message is, it's a great way to go. It's the way Janie was going and we've talked about. I think we've had a general support for uh, trying to do that. So. Being the shy one that I am. I, I know. Okay, good. I appreciate your speaking. <laughs> the only one I have a real problem with is your Main Street District. I okay. just don't agree with it. Never will. And, and I'll, you know, I'll be the one thing that I'll be pretty consistent about. I don't think you go far enough uh, south. Okay. You have already heard many times. Many times. Before. Okay. Good. But I'll go on record one more time. Okay, great. And we'll consider we, that. We can arm wrestle because I'm I'm thinking the opposite. My question is, are we seriously saying that we're going to apply the same building types, the same densities, the same sidewalk situations, the same businesses down along Little's Creek and close and farther south toward ACC no. as we are on Main Street? And right. my answer is no. No, no we've never said yet. that. Right. We've always said Main Street is unique. It's going to stay that way. We're not applying the same rules to Main Street mm -hmm. as we are even to the, to the existing places on Alamo. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess, Julio, mm -hmm. not, only, not only are each of us different from far. them. We're not that far apart oh, okay. in our thinking. I guess uh -huh. my comment is that I would probably refrain from using the term Main Street District okay. and use a different term for that red area, yeah, if, which I think should be bigger, right. which incorporates Main Street. Okay. I've got a, we have a concern about Main Street District anyway because it is so similar to Main Street Historic District that I think we're going to lead a little bit of confusion that way possibly. But if you've got another name for that, and we may end up, I think this is going to be true with a lot of cases, I think we're going to have a lot of opinions. So I think expressing those opinions, then we may end up having to vote on, I'm not sure we're going to reach consensus on on all of these issues, unfortunately. So we may I think to worry about names before we've, def before we've agreed as a group on the definitions and the purpose and the extent, worrying about names is, is cart before the horse. Okay, good. And again, I'd we, say forget about names for the time yeah, being. I, I okay, agree. sure. And, I, and where we were heading with the, the district was, uh, again, kind of a sense of cohesion, a sense of similarity. This. It's, it's as close to us in terms of even though Main Street itself as that corridor really stands apart, there's so many similarities and so many connections that are important with Alamo and the uses that are in there. That it, in our minds, at least, it, it, it made sense as a single entity. I just want to say thank you for doing this because this is really very, very helpful. Even though I may have comments about it, they're not, you know, by any stretch of the imagination saying this is a bad idea. I think this is a very good idea. Good. I, I strongly promote it. I just have some criticisms of what I think to be, you know, like, see, for me, the red means it's a multitude of things, not just, quote, what's on Main Street to be followed through all over the place. Mm -hmm. But it does have that, quote, downtown character that I, mm -hmm. you know, unquote, that I, I kind of would think would be similar and familiar to any and all downtown that has gone through an evolution of time. Okay. And that's the kind of comments we need from both of you. We really appreciate that. So we, we end up with as much agreement as we can possibly reach you know, with, with, this, with this document. That's what I kind of say. I think that it really should. From my standpoint, you know, I like where the, the northern tier is far enough north, but the southern tier could go all the way down as far as I'm concerned to Arapahoe. Uh, okay community college and it wouldn't bother me one way or the other. I think in reality it kind of creates kind of a, that that mustard color or whatever you call it kind of creates a uh, something I'm not as crazy about unless something unless something was really you know I I may eat my words you know or somebody might eat my words later on saying that that should be a residential area but I just don't fathom it at this point. So in that case, you're talking about this area to the south. Of yeah, if you can't point, yeah, I'm sorry, you have to right. point to that right. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Okay, great. You know, a year ago, once we had settled on the, what we keep referring to as the R5, because for better or worse, that's what it is right now, the old downtown neighborhood, the old downtown residential neighborhood, the R5 area north of Main Street, mm -hmm. we've 
we've settled, I think, as a group on trying to maintain its uniqueness. The details may be a little fuzzy. We're still playing a little with the borders and that sort of thing. But, but generally, that, that's a given, okay, the, the old residential neighborhood. Historic Main Street, old Main Street, whatever we're going to call it, Main Street from the railroad tracks to Santa Fe has a character of its own. It's very unique. We're going to keep it that way. So that's another distinct area. Other than that, within the overall central area, the only thing I see different is the activity on the street and back away from the street on both Alamo and Prince. Those two have a lot in common. Very different from every other street and every other block from ACC all the way up to, uh, to Bellevue. As far as I'm concerned, I, where I thought we were 9 to 12 months ago is we had the R5 residential area we're going to protect. We had the Main Street we were going to protect. We recognize the activity that's slightly different on, on Prince Street and on Alamo. Everything else is mixed use, up for grabs, however it's going to come about. Unless we're going to start micromanaging the, the central area block by block, lot by lot. And I hope to God that's not where we're headed. Let me see what some of the other commissioners have. Um, let's go back first. Any thoughts about extending further south, as Hootlio has suggested, uh, including that which is indicated as residential um, now? Any, any thoughts about that? Let me get David off track then also. What, I'm not sure what's your opinion of that that section that uh, was referred to sort of mustard color now. I know you've got other things in mind, but that works, your way, works it back down Prince, sort of addressing part of what you talked about, David. Is that to your liking to include that in the... No, I, I, I think I said it color? about as simply as I could. We've got the R5, we've got Main Street, we've got the activity that goes along Alamo and Prince. Faster traffic, more traffic, uh, businesses, a, a mixed variety of businesses set a little farther back from the street. Everything else is, is of a kind. Okay. And as far as I can see, that's the only four things we need to differentiate. So, so you're saying too many distinctions here, really? Okay. We're chopping and, and resorting it. If we keep in mind the kind of businesses, the ki sorry, the kind of uses that are going to be fronting on the street, the kind of traffic and traffic loads that are going to be going along those streets, and that then will dictate the kind of streetscape, sidewalk, with or without tree lawn, that sort of thing, that we're going to create along those. Those three areas are very different from each other. We, we and may to, have talk a, about, to talk about the area around Little's Creek and down to ACC or Church Street with the same characteristics and the same limitations or or encouragement that we're going to do on Main Street seems to me inappropriate. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know where that far off. I think if if we look at, and we may have a difference in terms of boundaries, but you look at the drawings again, and we have the Main Street spine, and then we have what we're calling Main Street, and then we have the R5, the, the old downtown neighborhood, and then we lump together all these residential mixed-use districts. So that really makes up the majority other than these very specific additions in terms of where the government offices, where are the parks, um, where are the iconic structures. So the, we really do have three major categories, I think, that, uh, but we have differentiated those different uh, sections, those different mixed-use districts. So, okay. so we'll, we'll continue to talk about that. It's good. So, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I look at this, the back map, and I think that's probably the easiest way for me to demonstrate it, but it appears to me, and I'll show you as I'm, and you can point to the, that one there, but, you know, you have this, what I call, what you call the uh, Little Creek Corridor, quarter, and, and it's similar to this, and then there's symmetry from, from this to the one to the north as well to be a like type of use. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess from my standpoint, I was thinking, and I, this is where I differ from David, I'm looking down the road for about another 20 years and anticipating that if I wanted to see this red area evolve, 
That's where I want to see it evolve, rather than saying it would go to the north to into this area, which is, I think, is already pretty firmly multi-use in my mind. I, I go out there today, I see things, even, you know, wherever I go to the north, I, it's kind of represented. It's not every lot, but it's a multitude of lots where you're seeing that. But when you go down to the southern tier, you know, beyond, again, using this uh, Little Creek Quarter, I, I don't anticipate those uses that are there today to remain that way. I do see a greater capturing of what I'm going to call that red area without whatever those uses could be, because it's not just one use, it's in, along that red area. There's, again, we're talking multiple uses, and it's, a, it's going to be a, a nice incentive, I believe, to the point is, as that land gains in value, there'll be greater and greater pressure to develop to the highest and best use. Mm -hmm. And I personally believe that that would be more that red okay. distinction. Okay. 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 All right. Anybody else have an opinion? I guess you've got two of them thoroughly Yeah, and delivered. I think we're at the point where it'd be great for us to kind of, and maybe we'll do it at the next meeting, but if we can do it tonight in terms of do we have four votes for that? Do we have three votes for Dave's that? not here. Pablo's not here. <laughs> oh, wait. No. <laughs> now you're on the record. David wasn't here. That'd be really great. Oh, gee, that's my phone. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the other two calling to say, won't you leave? There you go. You know, just subtle. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, well, let's, let's do that then, sort of as a straw poll. Um, I don't think anything's binding at this point. Well, it's not, but it's just, you know, it's just not, but when we get to Linda's discussion of scheduling, I, you know, yeah. we're getting pretty close. So yeah. Yeah, the closer we can get, the better we'll do. I mean, I guess maybe I would do something like this. I would do. Sorry to take. Yeah, to go ahead. Here, no, go ahead. We'll, we'll get around. I would do some red stripes on that lower half, you know, through that, and say where where that red could bleed in without too much brain damage or hangover or whatever. As, as you oh, might yeah. see. If I can just say what our thinking was with that. Um, the idea was that we were thinking that this area that's in the mustard color would have a higher percentage and a greater feel of residential than the red. But if you disagree with that, then I would say let's just take the red all the way down. Yeah. You know, I, I think you'd do one or the other. You know, it, it's, it's a transitional zone in my mind today. Mm -hmm. So yes. the question is a flip of the coin. Which way is it going to go? Right. Is it going to go the way David wants it to go, or is it going to go, you know, into a different direction? And, you know, it's, you know, it's a split vote in that regard. But if I had to make my druthers, I would go with that red concept only because you can put in residential in there, and you can do all that stuff that you already got yes. in, in the other parts without too much difficulty, in my opinion. Well, I'm not so sure I'd like to see standalone, single family, one lot per house, right. or one house per lot type of situation throughout that particular area. I, that's think, that, I think that's extremely unlikely in the oh, future. No, yeah, Property yes. values are just too high. I, I'm really, it's not a question of what I like or what I'm looking for. What I'm trying to do is be practical. Alamo and Prince Street, the traffic on them, the full traffic flow, the kind of uses that front on them are very different in character, very different in, in feel, very different in activity levels than what's happening throughout the rest of the surrounding area. You know, shorter streets, quieter streets, more trees. Alamo and Prince are very different. I understand the idea that, yes, would we like to see, as the Main Street area grows, the natural extension is growth down toward Alamo, historic buildings, part of the character. Um, but 20 years, you're saying essentially you think that the activity we have on Main Street now is going to double in 20 years and have to grow oh, on to no. Alamo? No, no. And I don't see that No, no. And, and in fact, all. when we get into the text, what we're talking about is Main Street will always be the focus of the retail, but there will be other commercial and accessory uses on, on Alamo right. and in that district. 
But in our mind, part of it is kind of where you're going too, and it's kind of a blend of the two in terms of trying to concentrate and focus on that, that retail corridor, that, and, that and area. And keep in mind. So you don't spread out the commercial uses too Alamo far. Alamo and Prince are essentially the gateways, extended gateways. They are the lead-in mm -hmm. to Main Street. Okay, they are unique from the rest of the central area in that respect. The traffic going back and forth on Prince, the traffic coming in from Santa Fe on Alamo, is going, it's not skirting, but it's, it's oblique, an oblique approach to the downtown area, to the central Main Street area. There, again, those two streets are very unique from everything else. There's going to be more through traffic or traffic coming up to get to downtown, whereas the other streets, Church and Curtis and Nevada and everything else, sure. are local circulation streets, people going back and forth. As more businesses arise in this area, I think yeah, we're, we're going to get more pedestrian sure. traffic. Um, for our benefit, very selfishly, we we really want to move on to the, to the to the R five tonight and get some direction on that. Yeah. Could we get a motion for the straw poll? So, um, and David, you've got one, and Julio, you've got one. So it sounds like we've got two separate motions. If you can get very specific about where you want those lines, where you want those colors, and then we can get a straw poll on that, then to give us some direction for where we need to go, that'd be great. The first so, one would be to one? change the color of that uh, for the south area from yellow to red, okay. I think. Is that uh, one good separation? That's sort of Julio's idea about it. I thought Julio's idea was uh, stripes or di diagonal stripes. You're going to get really crazy. Yeah, let, let's not add it's, a different factor. Yeah. A Is that all right? Okay, yeah, if we I'll change it to red. I'll move that we change it to red. Is there a second? Sure. Julio seconds it. Okay. Any any quick discussion? Oh, I, we're not on the board. Yeah. We're not on the board, so we're, we're, we're just going to okay. it. We're, we're hands tonight. So. Yep, that'll work. Just a quick discussion is that I think we want to delineate the Main Street, um, the whole within red now, and then I think that we probably should have a different color for the Littles Creek quarter just to differentiate the point of view that this is up and coming and developing and this is our goal as to how we envision this area in the future. So we can probably handle that with text. You would have to. Yeah. But keep it red or keep it? Well, if you kept oh. it red, then you could say, you know, I mean, basically what this map ends up being is the current and future condition. So um, what we can just say is that you know, although this is not developed as part of the major business district right now, we expect that as the business district expands, that it will expand to the south. It would be our Something indicator like preference for the direction of development, perhaps. All right. All those in favor of uh, changing that southernmost, it's four blocks, basically, uh, geometrically four blocks um, from the mustard color to red, raise your hand. Oh, looks like we've got four. Jenny seems to be on board, right? Five. Okay, five, two. Looks like we're good with that until we have other commissioners present. That's, that's in general. Um, David's proposal seems to focus on traffic patterns and what will develop along those, so it to my mind, that would include uh, adding red along Prince Street to the north. Is that a summation? No? Okay. Don't, don't repeat about traffic, but tell me what the map would look like. R5, Main Street, a zone along Alamo and along Prince, and everything else. Okay. So that, can we consider that your motion? Sure. Okay. R5, Main Street, a zone along Prince, and then everything else. So except and Alamo, for Prince and Alamo, distinctions. and then everything else. Give Dennis a minute to kind of get a handle on that. Great. Right. It, uh, it's and we had different. Talked, we had yeah. talked about that in the past to include in some of these diagrams, you know, that development on Prince Street. I, I agree. We, we had. Um, it, we did originally in one of the earlier diagrams have that sort of this this red uh, um, that you see here. Can you show them where that is? Yeah, this one here. 
the sort of red dotted lines to show. Right. That and we brought that down Prince Street. And then I think, um, Dennis, you and I went out and walked it. And it, right. our conclusion it, was. The position was that it, for about a half block north of Main Street, it, it does feel retail. And then we get into some offices. Then we get into storage structures. Um, and then we get up to this area, the shops and the restaurants, and, and again, the vacant parcel, where we really see the, the commercial uses. But that in between, to us, didn't feel like Main Street. So uh, it didn't have that kind of retail intensity. And, so, and that's why I'm differentiating it from Main Street. Okay. Let me be a little more formal back to that. Uh, for David's proposal, is there a second? Do we have a second on that? I'll second it so we can uh, be agreeable about our discussion. Um, we had those red lines. They are on the larger map on the back. They're a little different, a little difficult to distinguish. Um, that um, sort of throws in another element. We could do more of that, I suppose. Julio. Just a point of discussion. I, uh, I guess the thing that I'm looking at, and I in theory I agree with you, David. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to graphically portray it or right. how I can physically portray it in my mind so that it makes it's an extra wrinkle well I don't know if I you know we have seen at least I have seen I guess according to my experience of being here is that the transition is going for um, commercial on the first floor and resident <laughs> least residential on the top on the upper floors so least on the west side of Prince when you go on the east side of Prince, you're starting to see more of a different character. We, we've seen the, um, what am I trying to say, the, the multifamily, be it either for seniors or for whomever, and that kind of trend continuing on the east side. I guess what I was always thinking about when I was thinking of, of that north entrance is that that is really the gateway, one of the major gateways into what I consider to be downtown rather than just going down Santa Fe all the way to uh, where, the, where the two streets converge and really is bowls on one side and either uh, Alamo or Main Street on the other, however you want to address it. But I always, you know, I wanted to give that kind of a special kind of thinking in my mind that would allow for uses that would enhance that type of uh, atmosphere, I guess, of what's downtown again in my mind it's not like it has to be exactly like main street because that's not going to happen but i think again i'm looking further into the future and if i was to guide the future planning commission members i would like to say that yeah i really am very interested in seeing that prince street have that opportunity because i think it's going to happen anyway sooner or later i mean Probably the best example where I can tell you where it hasn't happened yet and it probably should have happened a long time ago is along Broadway, in part. You know, there's a lot of places along Broadway I would say that should be just commercial, and mm -hmm. but yet you have people still living there. Yeah. And, you know, and there's nothing, you know, I mean, nobody's going to change the market until the market kind of changes it. But I guess I look at these as being incentives for future developers and applicants as well as people living there that they have a kind of a road map of what where our vision is and not to say that you know if they want to stay there I'm happy with them staying there I'm not trying to kick anybody out of whatever they have today but I think that from my standpoint without you know I think I look at that entry and I look at that access it's a nice shot to downtown it's an easy way to get into get into where where you need to be and if you happen to stop at some of the commercial areas as you get closer to uh, Main Street, more power to you. The dashed lines do give that indication, and uh, on the smaller maps, it's harder to see as you work your way through it. Let's go back. Um, any further discussion about David's representation, uh, suggested representation? My only additional comment is um, if you, one way or the other, either this will be successful and you can work with uh, uh, staff to uh, make sure it's clear what uh, 
you had in mind that we're agreeing to, or if we disagree, perhaps you could provide them with something that shows that, and I'd be re willing to reconsider if we needed to later. I think that it would be helpful to see the visual of what you're suggesting um, integrated into this series. And I, I guess for my clarification, same, same point, are we then saying that what we would do is we would not show the government offices and the parks and the industrial land, we would just have all that as, as the same kind of character? It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to locate, orient people so that they understand, well, here's ACC down here, here's the city building and that sort of thing, and county building up there, that's fine. But as far as use, as far as type of activity, that is the kind of multi-use that we're talking about. If ACC goes totally online instead of needing a physical building and they start selling off their property, what do we see that as going as? Okay, is it going to go be residential? Is it going to be CA? What is it in keeping with? Is it in keeping with the expanded downtown, you know, past Alamo, past Little's Creek? No, of course not. Same thing with the county. If the county, God help us all, decides to totally move out of Littleton, Sort of like the courthouse. You know, yes. Together shoe dropping. Yep. What's that building going to be? It's going to be CA. But it's consistent with I, the I CA zoning. Maybe is where it's important. Maybe Sarah Jane can help with this too. But when we've talked about the actual districts beyond this in the text, we, we incorporate those. So we, we look at those uses as being integral to those districts. And, and that's what they are so, now. Well, right. they're all, so ACC this, and the two right. city and, and this the county really is very distinct. Like you're but saying, basically it really they're is a, within the it's mixed really use. really pointing out to people, you know, where are these areas? Right. So we're showing the plan, the existing conditions, helping people locate themselves, as well as kind of show what's the vision. So it's that combination, which is kind of messy. It's a little my muddy point, into how you yeah. do that. But it's, it's, so the it's, thrust uh, of my suggestion was they're not the R5 residential. They're not historic. Old Main Street, mm -hmm. okay? They're not the high traffic area along Alamo and along Prince. They're everything else. Now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, whatever changes, that's basically how they're going to be. But my concern with what you're saying is, is that if I all of it for, I don't know, drop a spot where all of a sudden somebody wants to do a, a restaurant or some other type of commercial activity that that generates people and they happen to want it either here or along there and you have this mustard colored type of thing that refers to a multi-use but it's not clear enough to distinguish where somebody is going to have i guess what i'm trying to think of is how not to create a split vote amongst a panel of planning commission members in the future where, where you know, either they, either they agree with it, what's, what we have presented or they don't. What's happened in the past, we have a comprehensive plan that kind of, you can go in multitude of different ways and never be classified as being wrong because there's that much latitude in, in what was written and what was displayed. And that is some of the angst that I keep hearing about from either our, as well as our city council, is also that we had amongst this board when, when you're trying to make a decision. Hang on a sec. In the interest of staying on our schedule, Thank you. I'm going to informally call the question. And I think we've got an idea without having a new graphic of what is being proposed. So if we could, by a show of hands, the motion, uh, Maybe Dennis could even reread that. I didn't get all of the elements. It, it, generally, what it is that there be uh, four areas: the R5 area, the Main Street area as a as, as a distinct area, Almo, Prince uh, th as a third and fourth, everything else. So it would all because it's a mixed use, mixed use character. So distinguish that and show those four. Is that pretty close, David? Okay, very good. Uh, all those. Okay. Um, okay. So you're talking, are you getting rid of the government and education, or is that still staying? It's uh, everything else. It, I think he had it as everything else, which simplifies the drawing but may lose some of the uh, orientation detail. Yeah, Jenny, it's Can going along with, we can't dictate that that's going to stay educational. We can't dictate that's going to stay county government. If Arapahoe County pulls out, what do we However, see that area being? If ACC closes down or shrinks their, their property, what do we see that area being? However, this is what is 
what we have right now today to help people to locate. And I just, you know, that, that, maybe that's the that's problem. We're trying to do future. three things in one map. We're trying to show what's here. We're trying to locate things for people so they can orient themselves. And we're trying to talk about future planning. It, it gets tricky when you're trying to do three things with one graphic. Before our memory gets too stale, sorry, Linda. <laughs> Let's, okay. for a show of hands, um, to. Uh, Simplify, if you will, according to the motion. Uh, all those in favor? And that's okay. Very good. Looks Obama like cell. one, I believe, David. I, without seeing it, I can't go any further. So, uh, six opposed. Okay. What about that idea of having a separate graphic to show what the future conditions are, so that we're not going to really crowd this graphic up? And have what Julio is thinking, you know, do we do the Little Creeks neighborhood in red, and you know maybe work on some of the county off or the government area and change that to it's a simplification the of what the, the districts and we because we get in the text we do do that you know, more but we I think it'd be fairly simple to have that kind of drawing as well that kind of shows those sure. Yeah. Well, let me ask this and this came up a little bit earlier just sort of brainstorming. Um, I think it was Linda said when you open to the two center pages, there's a lot of white space there. And then the discussion turned to could we get, go from nine small graphs to eight and so that all of the evolution is in the center pages and, um, still have the text in the size that we have I guess uh, one of the one of the things that uh, left out was we have one uh, map that is labeled iconic structures where all we do is add those and maybe they they should be on the first map boundaries and main street spine again to help people orient does any of that make sense to you guys And Linda, for what you were just saying, we did, I think, agree 4 3 to uh, uh, extend the red area down. So, and we could put more material, we could put more text on the first page then, and then it'd allow you to have that entire evolution uh, in one spot so you wouldn't have to. Flip or, or do you guys like, like the way it looks? Do you want to try to put eight uh, visuals in the middle with the text? Or do you like the first three and then the six? You know, it's an interesting comment you mentioned, bringing the iconic structures, that if you did do that on the front, that it might be interesting to have some of the actual pictures of, of those iconic structures that might kind of give the character or the flavor of what downtown Littleton is. is when hmm. people look at this, maybe some people might be, I, I I like reading the master plans and I'm pretty familiar, but maybe it might be easier for someone to enter into reading the framework if there were just a few images that they are familiar with when they walk down the street. And, and we could put that, if we didn't have to put these three on the front, mm -hmm. we could put those right on the front. Yeah, that's, the what, I, right. yeah, that's yeah. what was interesting, that maybe yeah, bringing some of the images of downtown. I kind of like that idea myself. Um, it probably make it more likely to be picked up and at least, you know, for people to browse through it. Um, so we have consensus on that or should we vote? Let me <laughs> put it in the form of a motion to move the iconic structures to the first map with some uh, pictures of maybe the library, the, the two main ones. I guess whatever staff can come up with as far as pictures and sizing, can we leave it that way? But we do add, add some photographs. And then Busy page. that, I'm sorry? He, he made a comment that it, it looks like it could be a busy page. It could, yeah. I, I think that I have nothing against your motion, but I, I do feel like I need to interject something. Since I just got this tonight, Mm -hmm. Right. And I really haven't had a chance to, I mean, the only thing I really argued about was that red going, and that was pretty, from my standpoint, a pretty fundamental, and I went right to the back. I would like to have a little bit, you know, if you want to go and do what 
what the motion is trying to do and create a, a separate mock-up of what that may look like. I'm not going to say no to that, but I don't want to eliminate this either at this point in time because I just got it, you know, 20, 30 minutes ago. I thought you were a quick study. Yeah. Pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some days I'm better than others. But some and days. I guess our preference generally is um, rather than doing that, um, we'd rather kind of simplify the task at this point, um, save, save the resources that we have. And so if, if we get those comments and come back, and we certainly can make that change later, it'd be very easy to do. But if you want to have that and kind of review the whole document, see how it works, we would glad to do it either way, so. Um, Dennis, mm -hmm. why don't you hold this, this map up here? I think that it was this map that, if you, yeah. Oh, you, you pull that back or not, you Doug? You what Doug can do. Yeah. That one is and a little bit sideways. glary, too, but. And there. There you go. That's not too bad. Okay. So, oh, it's I upside guess. down. Sorry. <coughs> yeah. No, no, there you go. Upside down, sideways. There. No, it's. Mm. Well. No, put north up. North is not. Oh. Toward you. I had it. Oh, you're right. Sorry. There you go. Okay. Yeah, toward Hang you. On. There we go. Um, I think that, uh, Linda, maybe what, what we were looking at here was trying to make, you know, get the, get the words in there certainly, but try to make those graphics close enough together that the evolution is obvious. And, and we can, you know, mess with uh, the words however you want to mess with them. I'm, as long as we can keep them in, you know, short and succinct, mm -hmm. that's fine. You know, from a marketing point of view, from my standpoint, because if you look at this, you know, I'm just being somewhat, if I start here and I go through these, all these uh, slides, for me to figure out what all the colors mean to even to the individual ones, I really have to start with this. Hmm. Because I don't know what the legend really means until I look at this. And then if I have a question about what legend it is, be it either the business or, I mean, or the industrial or open space. Then I could open this up and go to the paragraph that has parks or circulation and see it on that particular plate. So, I mean, I could make. So this is the cover? I could make that comment as equally as, as strong as anything else that we've been portraying. I don't want to get into a marketing right. problem right now. To me, I, I'm much more interested in the information that we're trying to present. What, you know, what color the, the wrapping is and what the bow looks like, I could care less yet. I'm not there yet. Is I'm more interested in the fundamentals of, of what we're doing. But you're saying take, take the end result, the, the image, the, the well, goal, the, the vision. The way it's presented put, put, now, Take the goal, the vision sense. as here's the intro. Here's what we see. Now, how did we get there? This is Basically, yeah. 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 Piece by piece. Let's, let's consider the 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 photo. two alternatives yeah. then. <laughs> One is uh, moving the iconic structures to uh, the first map with a couple pictures, and the other direction is then moving the overall completed picture to the front. So, uh, how about we start? With the last one, uh, I also kind of like that. I'm not sure which I like better, but let's see what you guys think. So, um, starting with that, and then with the complete picture, and then once you get to the interior, you see the evolution. All those that like that approach, I think they do. That's pretty good. Yeah. Jenny's ambivalent. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. preclude having pictures included on on it at some point. Okay. And we, you know, we could we could take this back page at that point, and and put a sort of collage together, that are the images that people think of when they think of uh, downtown Littleton. Yeah, or, or at least, you know, that helps if you, you know, you might very well see the front and then flip it over, see the back to see what's there and well, see. And, and what that and does is then when you open it up like this, right. if this is over, if this is over here and the mm -hmm. pictures are here. Then, then uh, that's not a bad way to do it. Picture. Right. I think that's a good idea. So, is that enough? That's direction. Great. Perfect. Let's, let's so, what about moving the iconic um, pictures yeah, to the 
boundaries and Main Street's fine. Well, I think okay, we we've, we've moved that that direction. Um, it, okay, is that then adding a picture or two or three, um, and that becomes the back cover with the iconic structures? Is that uh, all those that favor that approach for the back? Show of hands. I think. Uh, I'm sorry. Pictures on the back. Yeah, maybe not. But filled with as, as a concept that's fine. I think now that we've flip flopped and shown finished product for the for the big impact up front, and then how did we get there? I think they're going to have to play with it for a while and see if they can I do all of that. I mean, yeah. with it'd be nice if they could do it all on the on the center spread. I mean, the, the developments right. through here. Then that leaves the back for the kind of highlighting that we're talking about. Right. Some sort but of. They won't know that until they get into it. Linda. And I just uh, wanted to mention in terms of these five. Um, these five diagrams, I really can't see the transition looking at it fairly quickly, and I don't know how to change that so that you can see those transitions so that it's really obvious to anybody who's picking up and looking at it and what the intention was. You're looking for a flow, a better flow that reads more naturally? D does this the, work? The, with, well, I thought was if we had it this way, that this actually flowed fairly well because it's, it's like reading, and so it, you just follow from left to right. And it seems to flow into here's the evolution, um, but yeah, that that seemed to work. We could try it and, and see if it doesn't work. We add something else in terms of arrows or some other connection that. You know, is that I, I, I think guess I, that does. To me. When I they're have, all side by side, I think they do show up better. Yes, better they're much broken better. up. Yes. Going yeah. down this way, and then we go down this way. Okay. It is first three look. You know, if you just glanced at it, look almost identical. Right. right. What about the idea of having the uh, eight pictures going down the middle? Of uh, of the page like this, where you've got the words on the top row above it, and then the words for the bottom row below mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay, good. So, so then, good. so yeah. then you have all the pictures together, yeah. and you have all your explanations. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'd warn about is that's putting a lot of information on one double page spread. You may decide that <laughs> six reads pretty well, eight is pretty tiny. Yep. You may have to do some judicious choices as to which are the, really one, the ones that are really important to the story. We'll just print posters. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, seriously, I mean, it, I know. at some point, yeah, you're right. too much information, no matter how well the graphics are, are laid out and how simple the text, the text you lose people someplace along the line. We may Keep to the to... essentials. Sure. What, what are the elements that we pulled together to create this overall vision? Front. We may need to edit the text, yeah, exactly, to accomplish that. Okay. Take a shot at it with what we've... Oh, Steve, one last comment, then we'll go on to R5. Yeah. Um, well, um, I, don't, I, I don't know on how much wordsmithing you want to get into on any of this, but on the under the front page here, under the Old Town Neighborhood, the last sentence, it says, it is unusual to have a cohesive older neighborhood like this. No, you can't. Um, I don't like the word unusual. I'd rather have like a unique, because if you're going to have unusual, it's something that you probably don't want. <laughs> you like weird better? Halloween's around the corner. Something you do want. Uh, as far as the text, and I think that's a good point, as far as the text, bring back some suggestions next time, because I certainly haven't had a chance to read through all of this. I think, was that your point, Julio? Exactly. I'm a slower study, even yet. <laughs> specifically today. Jenny. And I just wanted to say I just really like having the graphics to, to work from, and I like the, the progression of pulling out and highlighting various areas to see the ultimate, what we've come up with. And then the other part is that um, this is the, a Littleton Community Trail graphic that um, just recently got my hands on, Linda also as well, and I just see this great trail connection that's emphasized, and I just wondered if we might be able to show that. Um, we have the Littles Creek pedestrian trail connection shown, and I just wondered if we could also show this, um, uh, the Littleton is. Trail as well. Um, down at Slaughterhouse Gulch to Geneva Park on the last big map, we've got it there. And then the, the other one from uh, the Stern Park floodplain over in the vicinity of the light rail station is not a pedestrian connection yet. So some of this looks forward, and some of it is uh, you know, for orientation, and some of it is uh, 
um, existing. Let's move on. Okay, great. If we can, we've fallen behind schedule-wise. Our next item was the R5, which is sort of the northern and westerly section of the area of consideration. It's currently uh, residential five. We've been referring it to that what, in that fashion. Um, as we go through these discussions, let me make a quick suggestion. Um, when something occurs to you, express it briefly. If necessary, let's go back and review before we have the complete discussion our past decisions. And I think Dennis can email that roster of past decisions and uh, we can see if we've addressed that and had consensus. Of course, we have some different board members than some of the discussions involved in the past and even the more formal votes. But um, let's do it that way so that uh, we don't try to what, re reopen and re-explore every issue. And now I'll shut up. Great. <laughs> Thanks, right. That's a good introduction. Um, what we'd like to do tonight is get as far as we can in terms of getting direction for the R5, the old, what we're calling the old downtown neighborhood. Um, we've had some concerns about you, Nevada Place and issues that were brought up. Do you have these for everybody? We I should, do. Uh -huh. Yeah. Does everybody have them? I think. I'll get them. Oh, I'm No. <laughs> no, apologize. They're not well, have to kind of, you know. The, right. Good yes. luck on figuring that, this out. That's the first step, isn't it? It's going to be a little it? difficult. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And this is, we're not yeah. here yet. We're, what we're going to do is, um, because we've had some, cons some questions about Nevada Place, for example, which is in the R5 and developed in the R5, we thought it might be useful to go through and just explain how that fits with the, with the R5, okay. what the process was. And Jan's going to take us through that process a little bit. We'd like to do that fairly quickly so we can get into the actual discussion of where do we want to go with that neighborhood, I mean, what's our direction. And that's what the matrix is for, is to try and um, get some decisions. The, the right-hand column on that is what's our decision in terms of each of those issues. And we may have some additional issues that we want to bring up. Um, so we've got space at the bottom. We can talk about other things. Some of the things we may, we may not want to include, but those are kind of general areas that uh, it might be useful in terms of figuring out yeah, where, where we're going with that area. So I'm going to turn it over to Jan if that's all right. Just Can we get one front. of, get this put out yeah, and no, displayed yeah. at least I'll, so I'll, I'll uh, the people can see uh, yeah, sort of the, the sure. framework or the format of sure. what we're talking where about. We're going. And then Jan's going to have some material as well. So. Oh, sorry. Keep doing that. Right. And then, the first page, yeah, I, page. I understand it, it won't be readable, but there's... Uh, um, They'll know we really are looking at something? Well, <laughs> generally, it does look we're better on the overhead. We have two columns of background information in terms of what's the existing building, what's the existing conditions. And then we, we just threw out on the table some two alternatives, kind of, uh, kind of existing condition almost in terms of what's there with the zoning and the design standards and guidelines, and then kind of extreme in terms of, well, we might go this far in terms of some changes that could be made, things that we've talked about. And then in the green column on the right, it's talking about, okay, where do we want to go? So what's the conclusion out of that? So that's kind of where we're heading, trying to provide a format for it. But before we get there, Jan's going to have some more, but this is kind of where we're heading in terms of information. Jan, you want to come up and, and do your presentation on the bad place? I took the, uh, now I have to say, I, I don't take credit for having processed this PDO, so, <laughs> but I did have the privilege of doing the final inspection for it, so, <laughs> and I miss admit the units inside are very lovely. <laughs> um, the, uh, this property, as you know, is in the R5, and because um, it uh, is in the TIS, to uh, demo the, the school building that was on the site and to redevelop in the multifamily project required it, uh, the applicant to go through a plan development overlay approval before um, getting a, approval for final site plan and permits to do his construction. 
And um, I just laid out here uh, basically the R5 requirements and then what was what the requirements were approved on the plan development overlay for ne residents of Nevada Place. Um, Let me interrupt you for just a second. So Nevada Place is on Nevada and do you have the address at the top of your can you can you give it to us off the top of your head for people at home to understand it's north of main of the downtown area on Nevada basically yes it's, it's actually powers in Nevada okay it's, it's and the the first building that was built is on the um, east side of Nevada Street north of powers right okay thank you and um, well as, as was pointed out, the primary uses allowed in R5 are multifamily residential, single family detached, duplexes, triplexes, group homes, nursing homes, tourist homes, medical dentist offices and churches. And the, uh, what was approved on the PDO is for multifamily residential. The minimum, minimum unobstructed open space in R5 is 25%. The approved PDO was 25%, and actually the site development plan that was approved was for a little more than that. Um, the site setbacks in R5 are the north setback is 5 feet, the south setback is 10 feet, and a corner lot side street is 10 feet, which is also the case on this property. Um, for Nevada Place, they, their north setback was 10 feet. Uh, their south setback was nine feet six inches with uh, eight foot bay projections allowed within 22 feet of the intersection of Nevada and Powers right away. The front setbacks in R5 is 20 feet. The uh, setback for residences at Nevada Place is 17 feet six inches overall um, with allowances for eight foot for raised patio below grade parking exterior wall and seven feet within 45 feet of the south property line for projection of corner unit and six foot within 23 feet of south property line for corner projections of south corner units. And the rear setback is, is for R5 is 20 feet. Um, most mainly the uh, setback, rear setback for uh, the residences at Nevada Place is, is exceeds that. It was 24 feet, six inches. And you'll see some more I'm going to try to explain all these allowances and stuff, and it's it's um. I'll get into that a little bit here in just a minute. The uh, maximum height for R5 is 30 feet. The maximum height approved for uh, the residences is 43 feet. Um, the maximum density in R5 is 43, 44 units per acre, which would have been 77 units on this property. This PDO approved 68 units at a maximum density of 38.41. Uh, parking requirements normally are one and a half spaces per unit. They provided 1.95 spaces per unit in an underground parking garage. Um, the uh, PDO uh, section um, 1095 of the city zoning ordinance uh, provides the PDO process to allow some variations, to allow the planning commission to grant variations from the underlying zone district requirements. And in the case of the residences at Nevada Place, the applicant requested variations in the maximum building height and in the portions of the building setbacks as you saw on this chart. Um, I also uh, provided uh, the Littleton Downtown Design Standards Guidelines that the uh, project met as well. And a lot of the reasoning for these varying setbacks that provided a little lesser setback for a projection on the building or for the corners of the building in a certain location were actually necessary to meet some of the downtown design guidelines and providing some variety and interest in the project's architecture and, and to uh, you know, provide a strong element at the corner of the, of the development. And um, with the underground parking garage, which is half a story below grade, um, that actually caused the uh, building to hike up about half a story. And so these were the reasons why the variations were requested, was to, to uh, provide a higher quality design project and to meet the downtown design guidelines in a better form. Um, and so I just basically, on the second page, I just cut, cut and paste out of the code the uh, criteria that the Planning Commission has in order to review the variations that are ever requested on a PDO regarding these these elements. And then um, I just, fortunately I found Kevin Reed's staff report on, on the, uh, the 
this project where he had um, listed out all the uh, the various uh, objectives and standards from the design guidelines in sub area four that the project met and that's what these three pages that I put together here identify for you so um, I, I just know there's been some questions by the Planning Commission about how this how did this project meet the requirements and and it wasn't a cut and dry thing so I know by looking at it you probably are wondering you know why is this 43 feet high and why is this so close to the, the curb here or whatever but there was a process that they went through and it was evaluated and studied and and, and it was found by the staff in the Planning Commission at that time that approved it that it met the uh, requirements of the design guidelines and the the criteria to allow some variations so I don't know. And I think Julio, you were here for this, and uh, the rest of us. This is I, new, yeah, I think new territory last, for us. So, last, um, uh, thank you for the background and sort of the synopsis. All I right. did. I did. I do have a uh, 24 by 36 inch copy with me of the sheet of the PDO that actually has the die. They did a diagram to explain the undulating back setbacks and stuff. If you're curious to see what that is, but. You the kind of see it when you look at the project, when you see the bays coming out in the, <laughs> the corner, so. Sure. Hello. Excuse me. Uh, the only thing I didn't see on your matrix was, what was the site uh, size? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I didn't put that on there. It's, it's about 1.77 acres. I mean, that's what I figured based mm -hmm. upon the. On about. It is 1.77 acres. Yeah, so, well, close. Yeah. And the reason why I was interested is because of uh, it's probably, you know, in my in my opinion, it probably is the truest uh, development acceptable for an R5. I mean, and what I mean by that is that the rest of the area that we call as the R5 area certainly isn't. There is well, no other is land mass that is under one ownership that's that large that could be, that could take advantage of the R5 per se. Without assembling lots. Right. 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 And that was one of our considerations. So that's, that's, you know, so to some degree, you know, that's because of this and because of being able to look at it from a comprehensive point of view, the whole concept of the R5 in quote unquote the R5 area is kind of, uh, I've changed my opinion tremendously. I mean, even last year, uh, Craig and I tried to come up with a, you know, with a, with a kind of a new uh, zoning for it, for that area, and I even, look at it now and I think it's too uh, it's far too extravagant than and and it should be a lot more conservative I think to some degree when I think of the old as you put it in one of your and I don't have the thing in front of me you call it the old town or old town neighborhood or something like that that our I mean Nevada place doesn't cut it in that regard because it, it isn't I like the older neighborhood the way it is and I guess I'm going to become a poster child to try to keep well, and the former use of that site was a school right. I mean it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't five no, I, little houses all yeah I, I think it's helpful to have the comparison and the rationale uh, looking at it in the context of what the comp plan called for what zoning called for in that R5 before we got into the public input and all that sort of thing um, I guess I, this gives me a little different picture of what Nevada Place and the whole PDO process produced, more akin to what I expected it to produce, a series of compromises for the betterment of the situation. Granted, the building is higher than existing zoning, but as you point out, that was in order to meet the, the uh, maybe superior need of accommodating parking without giving priority and visual dominance to it from the street and, and you don't the, see that part right the and you don't <laughs> and on the other hand they then did uh, increase the the setbacks on the rear and on the north side against the existing single-family right. houses so that that was at least an attempt to uh, to mitigate the uh, the impact um, 
I, as, as an example of what could be done with a PDO uh, with that R5 zoning at the time, I think it was admirable. I think what we decided after we went through the public outreach was the, the people who live in that area, in mostly the single family, the older homes, through their desire and their demonstrated um, dedication, reinvestment in the properties, says, yes, it's a nice R5 development, but not for that particular R5 area, which is what's gotten us to where we are today. So uh, as a process, it's helpful to have had that laid out for us, Jan. Thank you. That was one of our big discussions was lot aggregation <laughs> and whether um, it was good or allowable uh, to have this replicated by developers putting together five or six lots. This was all a single or you know, across the street, but large aggregations from the school to start with. So, But I think we pretty much concluded this, this is not what we'd like to see in this particular R5 area. This is not what the residents, what the community wants to see. It may, on the other hand, be a good... Um, a good case study for us when we turn to other parts of the city and look at the other R5 zones mm -hmm. as a uh, as a baseline. Sure, uh, sure. All right. Uh, what is, well, did you I have think we should be grateful more? for the desi downtown design guidelines because I know from working here yeah. for as long as I have, if you were just dealing with a straight R5 district and you were allowing somebody to build an apartment building in that, yeah. you wouldn't have a real <laughs> it, creative design going on. <laughs> it might not have... Uh, come out as well as it seems to be all right uh, thank you Jan uh, Dennis did you want to move from that to the uh, comparison of existing yes please great right. to uh, to the alternatives I guess is uh, the comparison being done the yellow is the background information um, the white which yeah that shows up is uh, the two alternatives a minimum or a almost a do nothing and a maximum of here's you know how we could change things or hold things and then we have the green on the right that's blank now we're going to try to keep track of decisions right. all right if i could just say sure. what we did with the maximum and minimum was not really um the full continuum of life it was sort of like within reason what's the minimum you would do and within reason what's the maximum you could do so we've bracketed what we think are reasonable decisions and there's a million little decisions in between so don't think that we are suggesting that you have to pick one or the other or that one is better than the other it's just a matter of laying out the discussion for example the maximum alternative would not include another nevada place right. uh, the other thing the the, the maximum would require rezoning as, as we have it structured currently. You'd have to go through and, and either change the language in the existing zoning or create a new zone district for it. So we've got those options too, whereas the minimum you could do with design standards and guidelines, fairly simply. So. Can, maybe we can shortcut this a little bit. Aren't we all pretty much in agreement? We're, whatever, wherever we go with the details on this, we've pretty much concluded that that R5 residential area north of downtown is going to need some kind of rezoning. Is that, am, I, am I missing something, or we pretty much concluded um, that a long time ago? I'm not sure what that looks like. Yeah, I, we I think the that? discussion we had was the downside of, of going towards the rezoning is just the time frame and just the, the, the brain damage that you go through because it no gets hearings. so much more difficult and it has so much more impact. Um, so it's a hard thing to do. Well, well if we don't rezone, so. we could have another one or two or three Nevada places there. If we're, if our vision is and the community's vision is no more Nevada places in this R5 zone or area, then we're going to have to rezone. And that was exactly what the challenge was given to us at the end of last year where we came up with a residential mixed use and office, it's what we called it, intended to replace the R5. So right. we had already thought about that. We've already came up with criteria and what I was alluding to is even though I have it in front of me of what we came up with, I would even question the validity of this because it's even more uh, compact, if you will, growth than I would like to see in the R5 okay. area. Okay. Okay. 
Good. From this point forward. I, eventually, if, if I'm right, if, if all seven of us and the other two who aren't here are all in agreement that we don't, right now what we're hearing from the community is nice as Nevada Place is in and of itself, it's not what is envisioned for this R5 area adjacent downtown. Not block that leaves the block. us then with the question between Jan and Suzanne, how do we best go about limiting a Nevada, a future Nevada Place kind of development in this zone, short of rezoning or the, the most streamlined rezoning approach it, we can take. And it gets us into these details in terms of what are the issues with Nevada Place, and so you can't go through, because some of those things, if it's um, the, the length of the facade, the size of the building, some of those things we can deal with in terms of standards and guidelines. Um, and, and when Dick was, Dick Farley was here, he was talking about what we could put in, there's a maximum uh, facade length, there's a maximum you know, type of thing we could actually add into the standards without changing the zoning. So we've got to separate it a little bit in terms of what do we have to do with zoning, what can do we do with the standards I, and guidelines. I, I guess it's I a will, little muddy yeah, in terms of, yeah. Really I hard. guess I will argue hmm. um, prolifically that I am for creating a new zoning category for this area and going through that. This, for some reason, this city, and I make it very clear, I find this city try to compromise on too many issues over the course of time, and we get into more trouble because it doesn't go away. It just keeps raising its ugly head over and over again. And I just, you know, I'd rather bite the bullet, deal with the people, because I'm thinking if we came up with a category that was agreeable to the people that are out there right now that it wouldn't be a big deal now if you know it's not the first time I've been called wrong on a public situation but I'd rather take that mm -hmm. on head on mm -hmm. and deal with it than to kind of say well we're gonna do a modified R5 for this area I think that's that's goofy to me let's I mean, put uh, let's go through these alternatives okay. and try to get some decisions and then you know, we're working off what we heard in public hearings, and then look at what we see from all these sections and see if then that's a new category or if it's workable as simply design standards. But and that sort of would go to, I think, uh, what the city attorney and staff would recommend based on what our considerations of all these elements become. Are we then, is it going from existing to those decisions, is that, does that dictate a zoning change and what's the name of that zone? Well, let, let's be real clear. We're no longer talking about a comprehensive plan. We're talking about rezoning a, and trying to come up with criteria for that type of rezoning or division or whatever. In order no, to realize. In order, in order to, realize. to realize that, I, you know, from my standpoint, I would have looked at it from a comprehensive point of view and say outright, the R5 zoning for this particular area is not appropriate. Now, what that means, something other than the R5. So, and that would, you know, and the implementation of that would be that we want to see a new zoning category created that we could deal with that's not part of the comp plan. We make the recommendations. We don't like what we, we're seeing now. We, we love it the way it is, if you will, existing-wise, you know, and, and, but are not crazy about seeing more Nevada places or things of that sort that are comparable to that. That's just my theory and what I'm saying. But if you want to get into that where we're actually going to do the pluses and minus of a zoning category, that's where we're headed tonight. Well, that's a piece and I just want to make this clear downtown. for everybody yeah. that we're understanding that, you know, this is not the comp plan process per se. But it's an element of it. Dennis, is the approach you were trying to take with the minimum alternative based on the idea of this is what we can restrict future development to without rezoning? To, to some degree, yeah. It's, it's reasonably compatible with the existing It's even a little zone. less than that. We could probably do more than is in the minimum. Uh, okay, so that's so. that's really defining the limits. It's it's the minimum is what can we do to try and, if we're concerned about 
long frontage and high buildings and big mass. What can we do within the existing zoning without doing a total rezone? Right. Then the maximum is, okay, if we get into some of these other things, we're going to have to talk about some form of rezoning. Is that a fair? That's, that's fair. And the maximum includes both of those. It includes some changes to the standards and guidelines. Okay. Um, the, the minimum is really focused more on just the standards and guidelines and how do we not get, have, have to go through a rezoning process. Just for anybody at home, uh, the boundaries for the R5, this is Prince Street north-south. That's on the east side. This is the alley, which is the eastern boundary of the R5 between Prince and Nevada. This is Power Street on the south. And you can see the the zone line actually jogs up around this property line just on the west side of Curtis. So we've got Prince, Nevada, Curtis, this is South Santa Fe, and this is Crestline on the north. So it's a fairly small area. It's, you know, four blocks, basically. So. And the uh, sort of vacant-looking sites there? This, this is where Nevada Place is. This is the right. portion which has been constructed. This is the portion which has not been constructed. This is where the old St. Mary's School was, exactly. Right. Thank you. Um, Given that, let's start off, if that's all right, with uh, number one, which is the permitted land uses. Uh, you've got in the yellow again the existing zoning and what that allows. In the existing conditions, you can see that not everything that's allowed in the existing zoning is actually in existence at this point. The one thing that's not is the off-site commercial employee customer parking on residential zone property. We don't have anything at, at this point uh, that actually meets that definition. The minimum alternative would actually leave the existing uses as they're currently st structured. The maximum alternative would actually change that to allow just single-family residential, two th and three-family residents, and multifamily residents, four or more units, including townhouses and apartments. And then the restriction on that comes later in terms of height and the maximum size and some other things. But those uses would all be allowed as, as this is, is showing it. What is dropping is dental office, medical office, uh, an off-site commercial. So you get rid of all those commercial uses in that alternative. That's one alternative. We could actually leave the dental and medical in there and leave those restrictions. Currently, they're limited to 10,000 square feet. Um, but I th we thought it was worth the discussion just because we did have discussions with the last uh, proposal that came through for a dental office. What does what do the medical and dental mean in terms of parking requirements, in terms of actual land use? Do they feel... Um, residential, if that's the character you want for the neighborhood, and can they be accommodated with the standards and guidelines and with the, the parameters of the zoning to actually make sure that they are compatible, or do you feel it's, it's better alternative just to, to drop those? That would make the existing uses non-conforming uses, and th there's some limitations on that in terms of you know, expansion. Uh, so there are some restrictions that go along with that. There may be a way, and I don't know if that's possible in that zone district, to actually provide for a certain percentage above and beyond what's, what's allowed for expansion of, of a non-conforming use. Can you actually get that specific within a specific district? And Unfair question you, to Suzanne. I'll talk to you. Want talk to to I mean, I guess it, you might look at changing the definition of what is non-conforming. Okay. And, it, I mean, that's the unintended consequence of any rezone right. is if you turn a whole bunch of properties into non-conforming do they understand what that means and right. they try to put up a shed or they try to do any kind of addition or demolition and mm -hmm. um, the use has now changed so and would, could we do that just for this history or would you have to do that citywide for all districts i don't know i'd have to look at that okay Huli, did you have a thought on that too uh i was looking at something else oh, okay i'm sorry okay um I, I i guess the only thing i can say is that you know, I don't know, again, the clearer and the simpler you can make any regulation, the better off you are. When, when you start creating these, you know, we'll do this, but, you know, with the exception in there, that really creates all kinds of hassles. Well, and depending upon who you're talking to, it could change every day or every minute or whatever. When you, mm -hmm. when you do a map amendment or you do a language amendment, one of the general principles is to try and create as few nonconforming structures and uses as Correct. possible. 
And so that's something you might want to think about because it's going to get in not only into our medical and dental, it's going to get into our lot sizes as well because we have such a variety of lot sizes. So we need to think about what is the minimum lot size, what's the maximum lot size in terms of that nonconformance. So we've got a lot of issues and we, because we're built out, we are going to have some issues with setbacks and with, you know, with other issues as well in terms of what actually uh, is conforming and nonconforming. So that's, so that's also going to get us back to the old argument. Are we worried about lot size or building massing? Right. Exactly. And then we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> For purposes of this, I guess I fall somewhere in between. There's no uh, off-site commercial parking, so I would remove that. It doesn't become an issue. I'd leave the dental and medical as is. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, I have. I agree with you totally. I, the one thing I was, and I apologize for jumping in. Oh, that's fine. I kind of did it without even thinking or looking. Oh, um, but since you agree with me, we we just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that you know, when when Craig and I looked at this on the commercial side, we said that the maximum at that time should be 10,000 square foot of building of non-residential uses. However. Um, since it became more and more apparent when we looked at that dentist's office and the fact they didn't have any on-site parking and things of that sort, then the question becomes, you know, all of a sudden that maximum 10,000 square foot is really not very reasonable because you can't achieve the parking side of it. And you can't, you know, we're finding out that by physically being out there, the, the existing streets can't accommodate double parking on both sides, you know, regardless of what's going on and still have uh, a, a realm of safety when it comes to emergency vehicles and things of that sort. It's, so That's going to be related to the lot size, and as Dennis just mentioned, you know, the lot sizes, this is uh, I, well, the I, building I'm not even, size, I, right? Well, no, no, I was just thinking this is within for the building itself. Right. That the maximum would be a ten thousand, and that's that's why I'm saying we might have to, you know, where ten thousand historically was not questioned, now it might be. You know, and it goes with the concept of your your you know where you have your minimum alternative of dental and medical of ten thousand and less. That might be a little bit on the high side. Right. Okay. And we might Good. have to rethink that and and say okay. If we want to see somebody use an existing structure for one of those two uses, uh, what would work? And I don't have an answer tonight okay. to give you, but I'm not. But the more I think about it, I'm finding out that 10,000 doesn't cut it. So you're, you're worried less about 10,000 square feet as a building. Steve, hang on. Let me go. Oh, I'm just trying to get a definition there. of what he's trying to. Hang on. Let's go. Let's hear what Steve has to say. Not going away. Save, save it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to you. I'm uh, looking at the uh, minimum alternative here and seeing that it looks a lot like the existing condition. Um, taking off that uh, off-site commercial part there and uh, making the sizes, the 10,000, decreasing them a little bit. And I'm in favor of the pretty close to the minimum right there. I think that's... It might be where we're all going, David. So dropping the, the 10,000 to 5,000, just getting rid of the off-site commercial? The, the thing that I would ask is if you change that 10,000, I wonder how many become non-conforming. And, uh, I, you know, again, I think I, you made a good point. You don't want to uh, put a lot of people into that category without consideration. At this point, nobody would be non-conforming. Okay. Yeah, they're all much smaller than that. Okay. So... so you know, I, I have a general question. I mean, this looks a lot like a zoning document. How is it envisioned that this is going to tie back into um, the comp plan? Because, I, I mean, in general, the whole discussion about the rezone and, you know, whether or not we would rezone, that's really a, a staff level decision as to whether they're going to initiate a rezone. I mean, for a planning commission to be um, discussing that, given that any rezoning becomes a public hearing and is quasi-judicial, I think is um, probably ill-advised. And so where where are we heading with this, I guess, is my question. The, the intent was to get to this vision up on top in terms of, and without 
going through the details, we don't seem to have gotten there. So if we could get to the vision, just in terms of what do we want to be, and if we can do that, that'd be great, because that's what the plan should have, is the vision for that so area. I, I think as long as everyone understands, we're not really making decisions no, no, about no. lot size or anything else, but more how is that going to fit into... Right. Right. What Dennis and Sarah Jane are trying to do is take everything we talked about a year and more than a year ago in response to the citizen input, the, the public outreach input, on how the community envisioned this neighborhood, and they're trying to come up with ways and means. How do we accomplish that vision? Does it, do you do it with just the comp plan directive for when somebody would come through with the PDO, or do you have to go to something as far as a rezoning or a zoning modification or even a new zoning category in order to achieve that vision. We're not trying to decide a rezoning. We're look, what Sarah Jane and Dennis are, are trying to get us to look at is if this is what you want, you can do it easy or you can do it hard. Where are we going to, what's going to give us what we want in the way of the vision for that area? Yeah, for anybody who's at home, this is exactly as you both have said, this is not a rezoning. This is really just trying to provide the, the direction. And what Norm and Linda and we've talked about is, you know, depending on where we go with this, if it's very different than what we have currently, we're really feeling a need. We need to go back out to the neighborhood and just really uh, talk to the neighbors more specifically, talk to the property owners, talk to the residents and, and the people who have property there and, and businesses there and let them know what we're thinking and see what the reaction is and make sure we're on the right track. What about the off-site? Can we take them one at a time? I mean, Steve's really looked at two that that are, may not fall within the acceptable category under the minimal alter, alternative. So what the off-site commercial employee customer parking, you want to explain that? Sure. Basically what it is is if you have a business on, on Main Street or off of Main Street and you don't have enough property there uh, to actually provide off-street parking, you could provide parking up in this neighborhood or the city could purchase you know, property and provide public parking or someone else could provide parking. So it's just possible to provide a parking lot, a surface parking lot in the R5 neighborhood currently. We've been fortunate that we don't have that. Um, a lot of neighbors have not been that fortunate. We have some of those in the CA which are you know, off-site um, and, and it, it doesn't it, it doesn't benefit the neighborhood terribly. So. so it's listed as a conditional use. You want to right. explain that? And we don't have any right now. Conditional use, there are specific conditions you have to go through in order to, to get that approval. And it's generally looking at compatibility and, and trying to minimize the negative impacts of, of providing it there. So there is some sensitivity to where you're trying to locate this use. And it, are you doing it as, as good a fashion as possible to minimize any negative impacts? So that's what conditional use would do. So, so depending on how we would, would set up the COM plan, mm -hmm meaning anybody coming in with a PDO plan mm -hmm. to change something like this would have to comply with that, not a rezoning, it's just terms of the comp plan, mm -hmm. then we could have some effect, some control on that without a rezoning. Um, you well, still have to change the... Right. No, that's, that, yeah. I'm just trying to get latitude here without getting into the rezoning issue. Right. Yeah, you can try. You right. can say, look, okay. we don't like the R5 being turned into a parking lot. Park, turn into a parking lot, period. And we would recommend that we'd like to see the existing residential area remain residential as being the primary use right. and not the secondary use to commercial. Right. Which would give us some leverage on a PDO application. You better believe it. Yeah, absolutely. But, well, there's no other way they could go about doing it, could they? Right. It's yeah. residential yeah. use. They couldn't tear off the house and put in a parking lot without coming in with a PDO. Okay. It's within the TIS. Yeah, TIC. So that's that's the protection we're looking for, the solution, without getting into a rezoning. Right? And that's the vision. Right. right. That's right. That's that's okay. Exactly. okay. So that's one down, Steve. We, we got one. <laughs> we got one accomplished. Okay. <laughs> the, the office building size. Right now, Dennis, you say nothing is anywhere close to the 10,000. I would think, Jan, maybe... 5,000 at the, uh, 3,000, 3,500 is the maximum? Allow me to suggest, or when I did my research, you know, we found out that the minimum conforming lot in that whole area was 5,200 square feet. Right. So that's the smallest. Mm -hmm. Now they go up from that point. Well, this is, and this is the structure size rather than the lot size. Yeah, well, this is, mm -hmm. the, I'm talking about the lot area right, so. there. In that, in that particular area, the smallest lot is 5,200. Then the question became, you know, for the residential, what would be the, 
you know, what, what do you want to see based on those configurations? I mean, you have to go, you have to kind of plan with a worst case scenario in order to come up with whatever you're going to come up with. And so that all being said, there's some thought that needs to be given. That's why I made the comment, you know, I'm not so sure that we, the only way somebody's going to get a dental office or a medical office with, you know, and correct me if I'm wrong, is to do a scrape and rebuild to that to that Sorry. dimension. And because most of the houses over there oh, yes. are not that big. Correct. Absolutely. And that's my point. And you have to do an assemblage as well in order right. to get there. Right. So, and, if I, and again, if, if, if our concept is where the primary use is the residential and not the commercial, mm -hmm. and that's what we want to keep, then we're putting our own mark on the ground at this point in time. Right. But right now, existing zoning has no maximum lot size, right. has no maximum assemblage size limit. So if somebody wanted to come in and put together three existing residential properties and scrape them off in order to put their 10,000 square foot medical dental building in with enough square footage over for parking as well, they could, right. they could do it. They could do it. And that kind of gets us down to about the third item. The second was the minimum lot area. We've evolved from the building size to the lot size. Mm -hmm. uh, third one is max lot area in parentheses assemblage. Uh, you want to discuss that a little bit? Sure, absolutely. And currently there's no maximum. We, we, current zoning really doesn't deal with maximums. It deals a lot with minimums. But part of the discussion we've had is should we take a little curve on, on, on this area and say because we're worried about scale, we've got a maximum that we're interested in. And so you can't have a, an assemblage larger than, you can't have a structure larger than whatever it might be. So that's kind of where that's heading. Um, and again, this is talking about lot, and the map that we're showing here is showing lot sizes. So the majority of the ones we're in the middle, for example, are 6,250 square feet. We go up, clear up to over 15,000 square feet with some of these lots. So we've got some good sized ones. Um, so the thought was if we were going to, again, not creating non-conforming, we'd probably have to jump clear up to maximum lot size of 16,000 square feet, which is, means you could you know, assemble some of these and still be with, within that. So you could have a 16,000 square foot, which would be an assemblage of existing you know, parcels. Uh, but that would then allow you not to have that non-conforming. Commissioners, any thoughts about that uh, 16,000 number? And I, I think, I'm sorry, I think the point, the point here was that as we looked at the maximum size, we were taking, you know, Dennis and I were sort of conjuring what you were all thinking because we weren't really clear, and, and that's why we brought this up tonight because we want to know what your thoughts are. But if you wanted to keep the sense of small parcels and individual buildings, you probably wouldn't want to go much below what's out there now, and I think 15.5 uh, is the largest one, and you wouldn't want to go any greater than that either. So that's where that number came from. So at, six, at 16, you could actually, it looks like uh, two two parcels could, could combine you could, at it, any it, point, and that's it? Uh, correct. Nowhere, nowhere can you get three. You couldn't, I don't think there anywhere you could get three and actually have, yeah, you know, for a maximum lot size. It, it, then the other controls come in in terms of, you know, the maximum structure size, maximum facade length, all the other things that we've talked about. So if on that 16,000 square foot parcel, you still have a, you're still concerned about that size. There are other ways to talk about, you know, the scale. So. But the, 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 the existing design standards and guidelines mm -hmm. would come into play, just as they did with, with Nevada Place, right. in terms of breaking up the massing, indentations, Correct. bay window projections, that sort of thing, to, to eliminate the idea of a big, massive apartment building or office block. Um, and that wouldn't get into a zoning, a rezoning, or a taking by any means. That's correct. So we could we could control that by the same token. Anything in the way of med off, uh, medical dental use or multifamily use would be required to diminish the uh, visual impact of parking by putting it to the back. Mm -hmm. So we we have that leverage as well without having to do a rezoning. The only difference is instead of having maybe duplexes side by side or a group of maybe 
you know, little blocks of four townhouses, two down, two up, then a separation and another group, and then another group, this would be a continuous front like at Nevada Place. But that's within the existing zoning in combination with PDO process consistent with comp plan and the existing design standards and guidelines without getting into any rezoning issues. Right. So we do have some some creativity, some latitude in what so we can do. Yeah, we've got some control now. Uh, Steve. By looking at your uh, your maximum alternative for, for the maximum lot site assemblage, you got 16,000? Mm -hmm. But that that's the maximum alternative? Largest you could have, right, exactly. So it allows the, our, our larger lots to be legal lots, but you couldn't you couldn't assemble larger than that is the way but it is. But wouldn't that be more in the minimum area? The minimum would be, uh, the minimum would still be that 6,000 square feet for residential and 7,500 for, for single. But when you uh, say maximum, that's just maximum. You're floating out there as a proposal. But oh, the, yes, yeah, these, yeah, exactly. yeah, these are alternatives. You these said. are alternatives, absolutely, you bet. Yeah. So, the, so the, uh, the maximum alternative would be no maximum lot size. Right. The well, maximum I, alternative would allow you to put two smaller 6,200. Yeah. As Sarah Jane said, this together. what they're calling a maximum alternative isn't necessarily maximum. It's probably the, it's just the mean, maximum it's reasonably the more restrictive consistent. of the two, actually. So it's, it's a little backwards. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's requiring more changes and more effort. So it's maximum in terms of you know, change. It's really the most restrictive. So it, 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 it would end up with the most, the smallest structures, the most residential of the the more residential the more restrictive of the two so that's so it's a little misleading in terms of so, the names. So if, yeah okay but reasonably arbitrary though it could be 15,000 18,000 mm -hmm. okay it, it, what what that maximum is is really our guess at what you were trying to get to okay <laughs> the maximum restrictions yeah the maximum restrictions right, right. Mm -hmm. so again so it, for example if you thought that someone ought to be able to uh, assemble three lots and that that was a reasonable thing. You might want to bump that up to, say, 1,900 feet, and it might be doing there, or 20,000. Yeah, and again, yeah, like, like Suzanne said, we don't need to get into specifics particularly as much as what do you want it to look like? What's the intent of what we're trying to achieve? Yeah, David, let me get down to this end here. Jennifer, um, Jennifer. And looking at the R5 report that was done, I noticed there was just some sketches of townhomes showing what possibly could be done if there were, I think it was three lots that were grouped together. And so I think, I know David mentioned something about with the lots, it's not necessarily, if you combine, it depends on the massing and that there's, it's, uh, for me, it's not so much combining lots. I think it's more of what you do when you combine the lots. Okay, good. Um, you know, as far as the massing that you're you're working with. And I think that's the big question for us, and we're not sure where to go with that in terms of is, is it important to plan commission in terms of direction that that we have those smaller lots so you have individual buildings, or are you happy with that breaking up the massing like Nevada Place did, that you feel like by doing that you're achieving that scale? or or do you think that there's just enough difference between that and having individual buildings that are separated and have those setbacks that that is worth the kind of change, or can we achieve it with design standards and guidelines? Yeah. Linda had a thought. To me, I mean, all we're saying basically with this is that we want to discourage assemblage of properties. I mean, that seems like that's the, the overarching goal. But what are we trying to achieve by that? By, by limiting the assemblage. Keep it residential. Well, Keep it residential in the I'm not sure that would do that. Not a heavy massing. Yeah. Yes. Limiting the massing would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we the may. only thing we accomplish by limiting assemblage is you might discourage uniformity. You know, you wouldn't have a developer coming in and assembling five lots in a row and then putting, you know, seven townhouse blocks that all look the same. You'd have to get somebody coming in and doing one group of maybe four townhouses and then a bigger lot of five or six townhouses and with the expectation they'd look a little different. You'd have a little more, uh, a little less homogeneity. And I think that was, Pavlos isn't here, but I think that's in part what he was trying to accomplish by limiting the lot, the assemblage size, that he wouldn't have somebody come in and do cookie cutter. Matter of fact, I think the word cookie cutter even came up at the time. But if whether, whether we're talking assemblage limits or building limits, 
those are both new to the existing zoning. They would require a rezoning. Correct. So if we're going in that direction, we ought to decide, if we, if we decide to go in that direction, we ought to decide which is really going to accomplish our purpose, the limiting building size or limiting lot size, or simple, assemblage size. If not, if we're not, not going to get into rezoning, then we ought to think what we can do, how far can we go to, to, to approach those goals without a rezoning. Well, and I think the third alternative is what Jenny was talking about, as I understand, and that was uh, talking about that articulation of the building, the breaking up of the scale of the building, and, and trying to achieve the same thing that way, like then at a place with different roof pitches and different roof lines and setbacks and, and air shafts and all kinds of things that really you know, break up the building and just connect at one point. Uh, it's a single building, but it's, it's disconnected. And they, that allowed them, with that scale, to have the structured parking underneath and to sit on a platform and do some other things that they felt was important for what they were looking at in order to make sense for that project. Steve. If, uh, if we allowed people to uh, come on in and uh, assemblage uh, two lots at a time, what would stop somebody into uh, acquiring the whole block on the backside of Nevada Place and assembling uh, two lots, two lots, two lots, and two lots? Absolutely. And putting four buildings that look identical to each other on that whole block. Design so, standards yeah. and guidelines, yeah. you, the right. direction in terms of looking for some variety, they could assemble, they could tear down. Uh, there's almost no way to stop that, I don't think, unless you get into this anti-demolition provision, which talks about a conservation, which is a whole more, that's a lot more maximum than we're talking about in terms of extreme. Uh, and that takes a lot of work with the neighborhood and a lot of work with the property owners to make sure that that's where they want to hit. And, and one of the other points that Dennis and I um, were kind of trying to, to channel you guys and think of what you were thinking is, is it important when you look at uh, a neighborhood like this, that the buildings have side setbacks, and we'll get to that more specifically, but that they read as individual buildings. I think that you can you can go a long way with your articulation to make them read as individual buildings, but there's nothing like a little space between buildings to make them read as little buildings. And, and you have to weigh that against, if you really want to see some high quality development, um, and you start requiring people to have side setbacks, you're starting to, um, you know, to, to have some issues with what's reasonable to actually develop because it starts to get a lot more expensive at that point. Too. But back to Norm's point, um, I think it's important for the Planning Commission to say to staff, this is what we like or this is what we don't like in the plan, rather than, and then let staff decide okay, we are at the point that all of this is going to require a rezoning or we're at the point where this is going to require additional design guidelines or, or whatever it is because whatever your vision is gets adopted by you and then if it gets adopted by council, then that gives staff the direction. And so for, for you all to worry about the nuance of is it going to require a rezone, is it going to require this, is it going to require that, is really, I think, confusing the issue from... <coughs> this is what we think the maximum lot size should be or we're going to encourage residential or we're going to do this. Um, and then you just, you know, that's Dennis's problem. You, you sound like <laughs> my old design professors in architecture school. Don't worry about beam strength and foundations and HV air handling system size. Just design what you want. Yeah, well, at some point you have to, have to understand what is doable. And what we're trying to do here is decide what's doable within the existing zoning without pushing staff to the point of saying, oh, God, if that's what they want to achieve, how do we play with the zoning and what do we get, what's that get us into? We're but, just trying to be pra pragmatic but, but about this. We hear the input, have the public hearings, and uh, don't get bogged down in the details, hopefully. But we at least are considering what the ramifications are. Steve, the one, the one negative part about your scenario where somebody come in and, and do two lots at a time if that's the, the limit we put on it. The, the other negative about that, other than the fact that it could happen, is it's remarkably inefficient. And when, when you break it up that way and a developer has to go two lots at a time, he spends more money on that, and that means money that he's not putting in to the material, quality materials and detailing and, and uh, amenities that we might otherwise like to see from a PDO. So that's another good reason to avoid that kind of scenario. We're pushing them into it. We're discouraging good development. Julia, did you have something? You know, I'm going to hold off. I think that uh, okay. 
It's good. I, I'm still thinking. It's good to hold up. Uh, it sort of seems like either we're okay with the control that exists or we need to add this maximum alternative 16,000 square feet in this instance. Um, would you like a straw poll, Dennis, as far as uh, um, are we good with the hearing process and design standards or do the commissioners want? Well, I think back to what Suzanne was saying, I think right. what we really probably need to hear is um, what, what's most important to you? Is, is, right. it this, is it the sense of small structures? Is it small structures? And, and, and then we can figure out what the best way to get there is, I think, in terms of, yeah. And Dave's right. point in terms of you've got kind of an efficiency, inefficiency, but you also have a character issue. You're, you're weighing all that stuff right. in terms of what's most important. Let's, let's do it that way then. Small structures or is a, a sense of small structures adequate? So if uh, you don't necessarily have the side setbacks, if we get into that, in uh, physical divisions, um, are we looking for small structures? Is that what we want? Who, whoever is in favor of that? Is small structure yeah. meaning one. Well, that somewhere between unit, three yeah. units. Well, I'm not there yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> right now, it's just somewhere between a little bungalow and Nevada. Place. Right. That's, you know, that, a lot of things are going to dictate that. Okay, so for uh, small structures is, is the choice, and then we'll go to a sense of small structures, which could be a bigger structure broken up. So right. small structures was four. If I got it right, I was not voting for that. A sense of small structures then, I'm okay with that. I guess we've got into yeah, well, it. Okay, so we've got oh five, five, five yes, five for the sense of sense small, of small structure over the, the small structures okay. themselves. Wait, over the small. I, I, yeah. I think it's an either or. Yeah, yeah. it's it's an either or. I either mean, if you, if you go for number two, well, if you go for small structures, you're definitely going to get the sense of small structures. So um, right, <laughs> it's not really an either or. It's okay, kind of subset, I guess. I think what's confusing. Okay. With that whole discussion is is your issue of side yard setbacks, et cetera. Because when I think of small structure, I'm thinking about setbacks mm. all the way around. Right. Not, you know, just I agree. zero lot lines. I, I, I am too. I mean, that's, physically I that's where we're heading. Yeah. Yeah. Structures. My brain. Right, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, but, and, and my conundrum, the reason I voted twice, gotcha. is because when I say small structures, I don't mean necessarily <laughs> just the single fan. Yes. Okay. Vote early, vote often. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean necessarily just a single family house. Okay, right. but a a small duplex, and there are those. There are at least two of them out there now. Mm -hmm. um, a an apartment or townhouse with, with three or four units is a small structure in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, much beyond that, and you're getting away from what we our, we said our vision was, or the the community's vision was for this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, a small structure, you know, two houses wide and within the existing height limits that we've got, that's a small structure. For twice that big with breaking it up, that's not the same thing. Then you're starting to get to more Nevada place fronts in that neighborhood. And that's, that's where I draw the line. Dennis, ask your question if you can with the division in your mind between the two. Well, let's, let's vote again. Okay. Or, well, no, I, I think I, I probably was wrong because I think whoever said it, I think was right okay. that All right. you probably need to vote on both because you could have small structures, and if you're doing zero lot line or you're doing some other design configuration, you could not feel like they're small structures. So I think it's important to vote on both. So. All right. We've gotten. Uh, let's see. Some you've got side setbacks on the second sheet. We are running out of time here. Do you want to try to hit one more thing? Sure. Did we wrap that one up for you? I, to I think so. We, we haven't defined what that is. I guess the, uh, well, the other interpret from from that. Okay. <laughs> In my mind, I, I'm surprised that you have what you need, but that's okay. The, the other question, I've got kind of major question, is the parking issue that came up. You know, if we're going to have a residential neighborhood, uh, we need to think about the impact of, of mandating parking. And um, to pave a backyard, to pave a side yard, to have people coming back, if you're living next door, that's a really unpleasant, unresidential neighbor. And I think we need to think about what the implications are. That gets into the, the scale of, of these 
non-residential uses. And I think we're, we're look, kind of headed in that direction. So that would then, in my mind, mean, are, are you willing to say, maybe we really reduce that parking requirement or we talk about in the fees in lieu again, something else. So we're looking at another structure. So we're not requiring that on-site parking because if you want a residential neighborhood, mandating on-street parking, on, off-street parking is not a good way to do it, so. But, mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. because of the uniqueness of this particular area, uh -huh. you know, you don't, and it became really evident to me when we're dealing with the dental thing, mm -hmm. Virtually nobody has, there's no, there's no area on site. The only thing is left is public parking along the street. Right. And that creates a, a tremendous impact. And I still remember the couple of folks that were here, they're pretty adamant about how uncomfortable that was mm -hmm. to live in that situation. Which made, again, which made me re-emphasize everything I thought of and where I was pretty liberal about even the permitted uses, I've now become very conservative in this area. That goes to parking in general, and we've discussed parking extensively um, at the risk of cutting this short, uh, Dennis. I want to get back to our schedule, which would be the report from Community Matters Conference. Great. Can, can we do that now? Absolutely. You we'll, we'll yeah. Draw a line here and, and yeah, revisit we, we this. We really appreciate the feedback. That helps a lot. So, okay. So, Jennifer attended the uh, Community Matters Conference. If you want to fill us in on the details, and um, do you have less than five minutes worth of <laughs> report? Yes. Maybe Dennis can. Yeah. Have I got that wrong? Um, I'm, I'm, you, you didn't go to commute. Maybe the reason. I, Never mind. No, you're going. You're going November, aren't you? Oh, I'm going to uh, the National League of Cities in November. But no one went to Community Matters. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> all right. Well, that <laughs> makes it very easy. Short, yes, short. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I uh, talked to you. It was a very good conference. If it ever comes back, we should think about it again. It's a national conference. It, it was really dealing with neighborhoods primarily. So it, it really was. Yeah, I think interesting from that standpoint in terms of um, how does the neighborhood function and, and you know, so a whole different set of issues. So I apologize. <laughs> Wrong conference. <laughs> well, you yeah, could have. You said was, yeah. we wouldn't have known. <laughs> we'll, we'll look forward to a future report. Uh, this, the Community Matters was uh, uh, sponsored or put on by who? American Planning Association? <laughs> no, actually, it's it's a the uh, it's a foundation uh, that does it, and uh, apparently the person who initiated the foundation was the, the, the moderator and facilitator at the conference and had all these uh, kind of neighborhood uh, representatives from across the country there. So it was in Denver for some time it's been here. So. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, gosh, that worked perfectly. <laughs> we ought to have <laughs> some, something, uh, something like that in every agenda, shouldn't we? More blanks next time. All right. Uh, wrap up upcoming meetings. We earlier announced uh, our meetings um, tomorrow night I believe is uh, district 2 with uh, Jose Trujillo uh, it is here and is from 7 o'clock to 9 in the evening so uh, particularly residents from that district uh, all citizens I think are uh, invited I don't have any more specifics about it. There may be an agenda for that meeting on the website uh, with specifics. Anything else, Dennis? Uh, no, I think that's it for, for meetings. I think we did want to talk a little bit in terms of you know, what Linda was talking about in terms of scheduling, uh, ah, in terms yes. of where we're going. Uh, we are you know, working on the text still. We're looking at uh, trying to finalize that initial draft still, and we're, we're feeling pretty comfortable with it, but it's this kind of information that's very helpful for us to get there. Um, and so we just keep coming up with these questions in terms of, you know, we haven't quite decided this where, where we need to be. And, and uh, the process will be delayed a little bit, I think, or because I think we're feeling at least, and we need to keep talking to you about it, um, but with the kind of discussion we're having about the R5 neighborhood, the, the old downtown neighborhood, it really would be important to go back out and talk to property owners and really do a, a good outreach this time. Um, 
because we got initial feedback, we need to go back and check with, with, with those folks and, and contact as many as we can to see are we on the right track. Uh, is this, are you, can you support where we're heading with this? Because it's the one area that we're really talking about change. Um, and that change, strangely enough, is not to the neighborhood but to the zoning because uh, we're really talking about not uh, trying to really maintain uh, the character of downtown everywhere, including this neighborhood, but in order to, to do that in this neighborhood, we actually need to talk about some changes. Um, and we think those may be essential to talk about. Um, other than that, when we get the, the feedback uh, from, from that, we would finalize. Once we have a draft that you are comfortable with um, and we've gone through that, we would then take that to city council. And the discussion we had earlier was not going back out to the neighborhood for a series of, of, of neighborhood meetings. Uh, but really just going for the public hearing at that point with distribution distribution of the plan and it would be a draft plan that would have would be bound and would have the graphics in it um, and we would have both hard copies as well as copies online so it, you could get it either way uh, and would we would uh, be able to publicize that through the newspaper little to report um, that gives us a little you know, lead time, so we need to just make sure that where we are in the process works with the publication dates. Uh, we can always do it online and do it other ways too, but uh, the newspaper is a great op option if, if the timing works for it. Uh, go to City Council for that one public hearing, and then City Council, um, after you, well, you've had a public hearing first, excuse me, you have a public hearing, you adopt, and they ratify. Uh, so you have, we actually end up with two public hearings, excuse me. So have, you have a public hearing, you make changes to that point at that the draft at that point with the comments you've heard and then you take the amended draft to City Council so my apologies so, let me I mean, that's clear as just, mud after let me go to that Linda apologies. first was that kind of what you were does that answer the question or address what you were wanting to do well, let me hear? start over Linda and try, try to get, make it clear <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just clarify um, we were going to take it to the City Council for uh, just their comments and feedback and then take it to a public no, hearing? No, we could, no. See, that's, okay. where I, that's where I confused her. But uh, you would, we would take it to the neighborhood first, is my thought, come back, in, integrate their comments. Then you would have a public hearing. So after we've had it distributed and have time for, for people to look at it and become familiar with it, so when they come to that public hearing, they, they're familiar with the document, they've got their comments in hand, and then at that public hearing, having gotten either a hard copy or gotten an electronic copy online and having read through it, they could make their comments. You would then consider their comments, incorporate the ones that you felt comfortable with um, and some you may not feel comfortable with and you feel like well, that doesn't work for us. Uh, but then you take that amended draft to City Council for a public hearing. So is that a little clearer that time? Sorry. I'm just thinking that will we have, so I guess we could hear City Council's uh, um, in, input when we publish the draft comp plan on the website or whatever because I'm, I'm worried that mm -hmm. you know after we get this all done City Council may look at it and say this is not what we wanted that, that's correct I mean yeah. I, and that's the question you've got to have is if you want to have another meeting the message I thought we heard from from City Council was they said present to us what you think is the right answer and, yeah. and that's what we want to see, uh, is you've gone through all this outreach, you've gone through all this discussion, tell us what you think the right answer is, and then we'll hear at public hearing you know, if, if, if we're comfortable. So, we so, so we've ahead. evolved a little from the timeline, the game plan we laid out almost a year ago, <laughs> and then again in January or February with City Council. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand we're skipping the staff review because we've been incorporating staff review and staff has been Taking more of the burden of writing we'll the, a little bit the more draft for you, yeah. I okay. think so that's we incorporate. Have that draft, and we're doing the right. outreach, right. Exactly. and we're, we're substituting the the preliminary review with the neighborhood because we're talking some fairly significant or potentially talking significant changes, mm -hmm. including zoning changes. So that's a new wrinkle. Mm -hmm. So basically, then we're saying instead of going to city council first, we're going to go pull all that together, do a final draft, say, here's the draft. Oh, sorry, public hearing, and then. Now, how do you have a public hearing before you put the draft out? No, you'd have the draft okay. before the public hearing. So let me, let me try, which okay. is available to council as well, exactly. So, right, so, so that, that's what Linda was saying. Right. It's entirely likely that we'll be getting some, you know, sub rosa comments back at least Correct. from council. Correct. Uh, yeah. Either to staff saying, what are you letting them do, or to us saying, what are you doing? 
before we go. Maybe I'm incorrect in what I heard from, from council, but I thought the message from council was you present to us what you think the right answer is. I think uh, that's, yeah. that's my sense of it. Um, one, the, okay. One more okay. comment quickly. Did we talk about two public hearings? Originally just, we did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did originally, and then we, we talked about even going back out to, to more neighborhood meetings, you know, to, to kind of re uh, do what we did initially and decided not to do that, that we'd gotten the comments that the public hearing would be sufficient for that. But there are two public hearings, one at Planning Commission and one at City Council. Right. You actually adopt, okay. they ratify. So there will be two. Yeah. Right. So we've got the same functions, the same activities. We're just kind of rearranging a little right. differently and staggering them. Okay. How about uh, as far as those next two meetings in November, uh, regular meetings with a hearing on the horizon uh, hard to tell potential yeah it's hard to it's tell there's potential. something that's kind of looming and Jan is kind of monitoring uh, we thought it'd be in by now it isn't in so we're going to adjust the date it probably will not make the 13th it may make the 27th so 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 perhaps uh, before we get too far afield we could sort of go back to the draft framework with the comments sure on the 13th and then finish a discussion of this correct correct with any luck at all correct without trying to start a discussion that's going to take us 15 minutes over Don't but just it. for future <laughs> just for future consideration like at the meeting on the 8th for example when we go past the framework and start talking about vision for different areas mm -hmm. okay are we going to deal with the the discrete elements we've been talking about for the last year within each of those areas same as the design standards okay yes. we're not going to try and talk about about uh, urban design throughout the whole thing and then try and differentiate the different sub areas we're going to take it area by area yes. the vision we're trying to realize and how we're going to go about it okay well but topic by topic yeah so right but i'm saying we're not going to sit there and talk about right. circulation right and, and mix them all together. We're going to take it area by area and define what the... No, no. We, we well, how thought, do you do that? We hadn't thought about that. We were, that we that's were what about, I want to talk sure. about. Sure. A year we, ago, we were, we were trying to get back to the idea of here's our vision for this area. Here are the different physical elements that have to, have to be put together to, to realize that vision area by area, which is the same way design standards and guidelines are set up. Okay, if, if we're, that somehow or other we went back to our little two-person teams and came back to parks and open space and circulation, we're going to talk about all that regardless of the, the, the way that that's realized in a very different area, a, a primarily residential area like the R5 versus Main Street. Mm -hmm. So I, that's still, in my mind, something we've got to decide. Because okay. I, don't, I don't see how you approach it area by area, sorry, not physical area, topic, topic by topic, <laughs> and make sense of your vision for an area. Okay. I just don't see how you do that. Well, let's see what they come up with for the draft. In the meantime, for the next meeting, we're going to finish what we started tonight. Correct. And um, you, I think, are going to refresh us with the uh, decisions that we had made in the past. Sure will. We have tentatively scheduled help. our uh, putting together of the plan for the first part of December. So we would very much like to you know, have something that we feel is complete. So we actually have a plan drafted in early December if we possibly can. So we've got the decisions to the extent possible at the next meeting. So, David, for your uh, consideration of uh, what you just stated, um, bring it as a uh, suggestion for the agenda that discussion put a put the two sentences together and let's do it that way for next time okay then we can all be clear think, on it i think the horse will be out of the barn by then we're we're turning sarah jane and dennis loose with with they're going to do it one way or another they're going to do it by topic and mix all the areas together even though they uh. look and and function very differently or we're going to do it by area and try and create the division using those discrete functional elements with one or the other either way they go we can't completely change now sure we can uh, we've been erring on the side of yeah. a brevity I guess and trying to make it as, as succinct as possible and so to that end you know we've been consolidating to say we can but I we're very aware, you know, I think of the concern, and that certainly is an issue we've been thinking about, but I'm not sure we're 
perfectly happy with our, our solution at this point, but that's the kind of comments we need. Okay. So. I, I th think it's still up in the air, but Norm, I'll take you up on your two-sentence comment, and I'll try and come up with something before good, the meeting. Good, good, good. All right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? You betcha. Here we go. And a second. There's Kurt for the second, and we are so adjourned. Thank you.